What is up, my podcast listeners? This is your host, Rafael Matuszewski, and it is Wednesday, my dudes. Shout out to everyone who knows that reference. Um, We are going to get right into it because I ramble way too much in the beginning of my podcast and never get into the topic and things go sideways. But anyway, what we're going to talk about is my experience with binge eating because today I posted um, kind of like a throwback post to a little infographic on how to stop the vicious cycle of binge eating and I put that together last year and I remember when I was putting it together I had this sense of like I want to say accomplishment but it was kind of a like a sigh of relief because I personally have dealt with binge eating um, tendencies for a while and today is one of those days where I got to see that post and I just remembered like holy fuck like I went through the ringer with it and like there's a difference between binge eating like clinically diagnosed binge eating to binge like behavior and I think that's what people need to understand the difference between the two like you like oh yeah I ate so much of like I had like six slices of pizza oh I can't believe I binge ate last night like that's not really binge eating and I will give you an example of how I used to binge eat I would say let's go with the pizza example because I've done this an entire large box of pizza six beers and an entire fucking cheesecake and when I got to the point of eating like the cheesecake like halfway through I was like oh my god I can't fit anymore and I just fucking forced it. Like, it, like to a point where I'm sick. And, yeah, I threw up a couple times. And then, even in my lowest low, I would still fucking eat after that. Now, that's binge eating for you. And, again, I've never been diagnosed. But with my research that I've done over the years and then chatting with different um, professionals, um, from dietitians, nutritionists, and psychologists, they would be like, yeah... Yeah, that's you're, you. You can be diagnosed with pinch eating, and it just doesn't happen just once. It would happen every fucking weekend for me, because I grew up in the fitness industry where you eat as clean as possible um, every day of the week, and you know Friday or Saturday night that one meal is your cheat meal, and you can eat whatever you want. And I was like, eat whatever I want, and I fucking pushed that to the limit and that started a whole psychological behavior that I did not know that I was going to have like I remember literally like being at a position where someone wanted to go out for lunch at a certain restaurant and I'm like oh I can't eat there because it's not within my macros it's not clean and the person was just like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, I haven't seen you in X amount of years. Like, it's my only night here. Like, why? Why? And we actually had, like, an argument about it. And I got to a point where I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with me? Like, why can't I just go out for lunch with a friend of mine? Like, this is, like, ridiculous. Like, it almost became my own like you know street jacket like I couldn't get out of it because I was getting chokehold by this weird behavior like that's binge eating a lot of the people that have binge like behaviors are like you know they eat dinner and they put around the house and they're like oh I kind of want a snack and they like find a bag of chips and they end up like eating the whole bag of chips and then they're like oh my god I can't believe And I'm not trying to discredit that, but a lot of people need to know the proper vocabulary when it comes to using the word binge eating because there's, like, straight-up disorders. Like, 
I'm thankful that I didn't have it any worse, but it did control my life to a point where I couldn't enjoy life. And it took me a long time to get to a point where I am right now, where I just don't give a fuck about, you know, shoving my face with as much food as possible. And I don't give a fuck about if I eat a donut, like right now, after this podcast, I decide to go to a store and buy a fucking donut and eat like three of them. I'm not going to be like, oh my God, I can't believe I did this to my body. I need to like go work out extra hard tomorrow. I don't give a fuck about it at all. Like having this full autonomy over my life has made me stronger, both mentally and physically leaner than I ever was before. I have a better relationship with food. I have a better relationship with the people around me that are important. And life goes on, right? People fall into the minutia of what they're putting in their mouth. They're worried about their calories. They're worried about how many grams of sugar they're taking in. And then when they do fall off that strict behavior they feel like they've failed the world and they feel down on themselves. They go into some other you know, harmful behaviors and it just continues. It continues. So I'm not going to say that oh, what I did to stop binge eating is going to help you because everyone's different. And, you know, it took at least about a year of that or maybe even two years to be exact of me falling into that strict pattern of dieting, of clean eating all the time and then binging to a point where I'm throwing up and then eating after again, um, to going to a point where I just eat like a human being. If I decide to go out for lunch on a Wednesday with a friend, I don't care what I order and I just go on with my week. I don't even have a second thought. It doesn't just happen like that. Um, The first step for me was like getting to that point where I'm like, I realize that my lifestyle of how I eat is literally crippling me from enjoying life. And I was like, fuck. And it wasn't like the next day I was like, okay, I need to stop this. I honestly would have those tendencies even after when I got to that realization point um, say that next year like maybe once or twice I actually stopped myself from binging and that's not a very good ratio you know and my first step if I had to do it all over again I would just fucking seek help I would go to a counselor or a psychologist whatever it is and just work that shit out. Like I recently, and it's always been on my list, this year is the first year that I went to go um, seek a counselor out. And honestly, it's been life-changing, life-changing. You need to take care of your mental health because it influences everything that you do on a daily basis. And, you know, we need to have those bigger conversations about mental health, but a lot of people just feel, you know, awkward about it shy about it almost like you know you're not going to be good enough as a human being if you admit that you're seeing someone or the fact that you need to go talk to someone but you're like oh no I can't do it because of x y and z so that's step one I would literally go seek out a professional to help you with this because it's going to be very 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 difficult to tackle this on your own Especially if your environment already is a negative one with the people that you hang out with the most and, you know, maybe your food at home and how everything's set up is not the best way to help you stop binge eating. But you need to actually sit down and have a conversation with yourself because in today's day and age, like, we don't have the time to literally be alone with our own thoughts. And that's another big thing that's helped my mental health like tenfold um, this year and a half, this past year and a half, is like literally taking my dog out every day for like a three-kilometer walk without my phone. 
And literally all I have to stimulate my brain is my own thoughts. And I kid you not, like the amount of benefit that I've been getting from that mentally and just like thinking clearly and how it's affected like my business positively has been huge, huge. And I'm not saying that you're going to fix everything in your life by just going outside to a walk, but it's a chance for you to check in with yourself. Because the moment we wake up, we're on. We're like, all right, get kids ready for school, make them food. I gotta like put something in my mouth before I die because I know I'm not gonna eat until later. And I gotta like drive over here. I need to get into my desk. I need to do this. I need to have six fucking Zoom meetings back to back. And now, holy shit, it's already like 6 p.m. I need to get food into my kids' mouths again. And holy shit, it's 10 p.m. I need to go to sleep and now go do this whole thing all, all over again. Like, we live really fucking crazy-ass lives, and most of us can't even settle down for just a minute to just breathe and work through whatever's going on to our heads, you know what I mean? So the fact that I'm taking the time to go walk my dog for three kilometers where it works out to be like, I don't know, 40 minutes or so outside, like, that has been huge for me, huge made me think so clearly and has helped me so so much um that being said with binge eating you need to have a conversation with yourself first to work out what's going on inside your head ask yourself why am i doing this and i wish i did this for myself like why am i doing this And when you actually ask yourself and try to answer yourself, it becomes really silly for the most part. And then keep asking yourself why because you're going to start getting all these like surface-based answers. And then you're going to get into the deep-rooted cause of why you're doing it. And it's most likely, and again, this is just based on opinion and experience with other people who've dealt with this. And it's because you've been restricted in some way. And food and nutrition in general is just restrictive by nature. And we need to step away from that. And we have this like preconceived thing that this food is bad. I can't eat that food because it's bad. Well, who the fuck told you that it's bad? A donut is not bad. It's food. Pizza is not bad. It's food. It's how you utilize that food with yourself if you're eating a fucking box a day yeah that food is bad but there's no food that's bad you can say that about carrots carrots are bad well no they're not but if you ate a whole bag of them yeah it's probably not the best thing for you to do right so we we need to step away from this restricted behavior and like our nutrition industry is terrible for it And that's why people constantly think that, oh, there's some sort of secret out there. Like there's some other diet or some other thing that's going to fix my shitty ass psychological behavior around food. No, fuck, no, 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 no. Like you need to look within yourself first and ask yourself why and seek out help. Like... I wish if I could go back in time, I would have I would have dealt with my binge eating like way before. And I can like confidently say that I probably stopped binge eating probably three years ago. And I dealt with it for like seven years. That's a long fucking time to deal with binge eating and not doing anything about it. So if there's anything from this podcast that I want you to take away is don't fucking wait to change your life when it comes to this stuff because it's going to prevent you from not enjoying it to its fullest because that behavior is going to spill over to other things in your life and we don't want that so I'm going to stop there because I'm rambling like crazy and I can talk about this forever and I don't want to talk your ear off but if you're dealing with any kind of binge eating like I said step one go reach out to someone I'm more than happy to have you guys reach out to me I want to help DM me on Instagram, Facebook, whatever it is. I'm here to help. 
Um, hit the show notes, add me on Facebook, add me on Instagram. Let me know if you have any questions and share this podcast with your friends and family. And that's it for me, you guys. I fucking love you all. Thank you for the support. Every single one of you are amazing and I could not do what I do without you all. So that's it for me. Until next time, you guys.